So I stopped misting my plants, and maybe you should too. Let's talk about humidity, and let me show you why I don't mist my plants anymore. Hey, Lee here, and I no longer mist my plants. Most of my plants that I have are tropical plants and they do really love high humidity, but in the winter in my place, the humidity is low. I'm talking extremely low. And I'll admit, I was someone who used to fall for that myth that misting your house plants helps increase the humidity, but it is not an effective way to increase the humidity in your space. It will increase the humidity marginally for your plants for a few minutes but after that it will go right back to normal and try not to get focused on well at least a few minutes is better than nothing i'm talking about a humidity increase that is so small it would be kind of like trying to dust your kitchen table by blowing on it and standing three feet away from it you could do it but it's not a good use of your time depending on your plant you could also damage new growth this is one of my smaller Monstera deliciosas. I have growth from two leaves. One leaf I've been misting daily and the other I've left alone. If you are misting new leaves, you can actually permanently damage new foliage. Once a leaf is damaged on this plant, that's it. There's no going back. And yes, I am sorry for doing this to my Monstera on purpose, but I need to get my point across. There are more effective ways to increase the humidity in your space. You could get a humidifier. If you're getting a humidifier specifically for your plants, it's best to get one where you can set the humidity level. So for example, if you wanna keep the humidity in your space at around 60%, you can set your humidifier. It will turn on when it dips below 60 and then shut off after a few minutes when it gets over 60%. While one of these could set you back between $50 to $100 depending on what size you want to get, it is probably the most effective way to increase the humidity in your space. And full disclosure, I am someone who uses a humidifier to help my plants. The other most effective way to increase the humidity in your home is to... What? There's, there's no other effective way? Oh. Um, remember to subscribe. Bye. Okay, wait. Well, you did read that grouping plants together can increase the humidity. Well, to that, I would say prove it. Outside of a commercial greenhouse operation or an actual Amazon rainforest, I'm not sure that grouping five or six plants together will have any real difference on increasing the humidity for those plants. Maybe you could group 20 to 30 plants together on the floor in your house on top of a tarp and make it impossible to water. It's just not an effective way to increase the humidity for your plants. Okay, wait, but you also read that making a pebble tray will help increase the humidity for your plant. Well, I've tried that. I went down to my local quarry. I collected a whole bunch of pebbles. I brought them back into my house, put them nicely on a little tray. I put the plant on the tray. I watered the plant. I watered it some more. I accidentally put too much water in. The water level went too high. I had to take off the plant. I carried this tray full of pebbles and waters over to the sink. I spilled a bunch of water on the floor, made it to the sink, poured the water out. Pebbles go down the sink. It was horrible. It looked bad. I won't do it again. It's not practical, especially if you have a lot of plants that you want to do that with. I just don't recommend it. Short of doing something like this, where you're trying to create a miniature greenhouse effect for your plant, there isn't really an effective way to increase the humidity for your plants. In all honesty, this is what I would recommend. Just don't bother with humidity at all. You should be buying plants that make you happy and that do well in your house. You have to know your plants, you have to know your space. If you're living in a part of the country where the humidity gets extremely low in the winter, you probably shouldn't be buying plants that require a very high level of humidity. This is exactly why I don't have calatheas in my house. I don't want to have a beautiful plant in the summer, and then in the winter, I have to be stressed out by dying or browning leaves. Just take some time, do some research on the plants that you want to get, and know your space. If you live in somewhere like the southern United States where you might have high humidity for most of the time, congratulations. 
you can basically buy whatever plant that you want. But if you're living in Canada, like me, you should be buying plants that are able to live and do well in your space. You shouldn't have to go out and be spending hundreds of dollars on equipment. A plant hobby should make you happy, not make you stressed out. Hey, this is Lee's editor, and one thing he didn't mention is how air circulation plays a role in why misting is so bad for your plants. In the wild, due to higher humidity and more airflow, like wind, water doesn't actually sit on plants' leaves for very long. So the reason why I think he got leaf damage is probably from this standing water. And this might be why the second part of the misting myth is don't mist your house plants at night. I think the reasoning for this is because of the colder temperatures and the lack of sunlight will leave standing water on your leaves for longer, but it doesn't actually matter if there's no air circulation. So the airflow helps water evaporate faster and in your home you probably don't have a fan running on your plants. And Lee isn't suggesting that you get a fan and start misting, it's just one of the contributing factors to why you shouldn't be misting your house plants. And since this monstera leaf has finished unfurling, let me show you what the water damage looks like now on that new leaf. Anyway, thanks for listening to Lee's editor. Back to the video. The one positive thing that misting has done for me is it helped me build a stronger connection to my plants. Having a task that you have to do daily really helps you stop and take a closer look at your plants. You can tell when they're doing well, you can tell when they're not doing so well, and you can make those changes and adjustments quickly, especially compared to someone who might water their plants once every two weeks and then completely ignores them the rest of the time. So if you are a daily mister or you're someone who's looking to stop daily misting, you'll have to think of a new strategy that will help you check on your plants more frequently. Like the video if it was helpful and comment down below, what do you do to increase the humidity in your home? See you next time.